Hey up everybody! Uh, right then, I'm just moving on to another little project. Uh, it's related to my local that I finished not long back, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make another a smaller riding car. What what it is? I made this one approximately two years ago, so it's not that old really. And I made it for my battery electric local that's behind me. It's only got four wheels. It's not got any bogies on it, so it's about on its maximum length for going around curves at track at our club anyway. So what I'm wanting to do is uh, I was going to adapt it to put a water container on back to act as a tender and something to put the coal in up front. But I'm a bit reluctant to, to modify this one because you know it's okay for one adult and a child. So rather than modifying it I think I'm going to bite the bullet and uh, make a Make a short version, just a one-seater version with a, with a tank on back and some way for coal on front. That's until I, you know, until I get my tender done, because I'm planning to make a tender for this. But maybe that's for for a winter project. I'm not sure. I'll not be using the same materials because I'll just be uh, making it from any materials that I've got lying around in workshop. So watch this space, and I'll keep keep you updated on this. Let's do a brief overview of then of the main components in this riding car. Here's a list I made out of the cutting list that, that's roughly that's needed. I mean this this isn't hard and fast these sizes. You can uh, you can adjust and adapt the sizes to suit what you need and, and the materials that, that you've got. So basically it breaks down into various components, the main frame, the suspension units axles, bearings and wheels, uh, the brake components and the front and rear plate and then there's some other miscellaneous items that's going to be needed so first of all then the frame it's basically just two long stretches and I've made those out of square tubing but I've not got no more square tubing on stock, so I'm going to use round tubing. And then two stretches are, are, are tied together with two middle piece, two cross members in the middle to support, to give it strength. And then two on, on each end, one on each end, sorry, that's two for the ends. So there's four of those. And that'll be just welded up. Then the suspension. The main components on the suspension are the hangers, the hubs, the arms, the springs and the pivot tie rods. So when I made, when I copied this one off an off uh, existing riding car, the actual suspension unit here was a casting and I've just fabricated this. So all, it, all, it's, all you need is a central boss to put the wheel bearings in and then two arms on each on each end of that welded on one one horizontal and one at an angle is the four springs with a bolt through then the suspension units fastened onto the main frame by four down tubes or angles that come from the main frame down to that position and then they're tied together with a tie rod straight through the suspension to both sides so it pivots And then that suspension unit is going to house the wheel bearing for the wheels and the axles to fit into. And also there's a bracket welder on which um, allows the brake shoes to, be, to pivot onto. The next major components then are the axles and the wheels and the bearings. Now the wheels on this are 4 inch diameter. But anywhere between four and four inch and four and a half will do. Same with the bearings. If if you're using different size bearings to what I'm going to use, you've just got to turn the axles down to suit the bearings, and then the bearings are going to fit into the suspension units, and that's what's just going to hold the wheels in in position. Then there's the brake components. Uh, the brake components 
consist of a pivot point that come off the suspension arms for the brake hangers where the brake shoes fit then you've got a equalizing bar that goes across that comes off the hanger Let's see them on both sides and then from the equalizing bar you've got your tie rods and they couple up from both sides to that central equalizing arm so one's pulling that way as it's going down then the other's pulling this way as it's going up so all the brake all the four brakes are independent of each other and they equalize as the pressure goes on at each end you've got your end plate that covers everything up on the ends fastens to the frame and then off this you've got your, your coupling so there's two end plates to fit but while we're on this end you've got your, your footrest brackets where your footrests are going to fit into and then the footrest will be whether it's a raised track or a ground level track they'll be to the relevant position to what length you want them to be on your particular track then there's the seat so that's all the main components dealt with then, then other than that there'll be some other miscellaneous items so the only other thing you're going to need to know is your actual seat, if it's on a raised track, will be will fit on the actual frame of the riding car. And if you're going to sit on a ground level track, obviously you've got to have the seat raised up to a suitable height to suit your size, approximately to that size, with a, a section, a box section of wood in between it. And that's all the major components. And I'm just going to be using this round, this round tubing to do the main frame uh, and any, any various bits that I can find that will, um, you know, make it similar to this arrangement. That's an overview of the main components then on riding car. I mean there is other, other designs available but I'm going to stick with this one because I've tried and tested it. Uh, so uh, I'll probably start in the next video making it frame then, uh, so that'll be in part two. So anyway, I'm going to sign off for now then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now.